Well, the process of using conjugation to map genes in a bacteria relies on a bacteria that was discovered in the 1950s that was very efficient at transferring genes by conjugation. And this bacteria was referred to as HFR, which stands for high frequency of recombination. In HFR cells, the F, fertility factor, has been incorporated into the chromosome. And now, one of two things can happen. Either the F factor can be removed to become an independent plasmid again, and when this happens, some of the bacterial genes are removed along with it, and these are called F prime factors, or the F factor, along with the entire chromosome of the bacteria, can be transferred. In the wild, the F factor sequence is received by the recipient cell. The transferred DNA undergoes homologous recombination and is inserted into the chromosome. If the F factor sequence is not received, then the transfer DNA is destroyed. What I'm about to describe sounds very complicated, but if you sit down, draw it out, it should become clear. Now we can use the F factor that has been incorporated into the bacterial chromosome as a way of mapping the order of genes in a bacteria. This mapping approach is called interrupted mating, and you will see why it is called that shortly. To use interrupted mating to map a bacterial genome, you need a few things. You will need the bacteria that you wish to map to be HFR positive, and in the procedure it will be the donor bacteria. You will need a recipient bacteria that is HFR negative and is missing the genes you wish to map. The recipient bacteria will also need to be resistant to an antibiotic to which the donor is sensitive. So let's have a look at an example of this in operation. Say you wish to map the location of genes that can produce proteins that can make the amino acids leucine and threonine, and the bacteria you have is HFR positive and sensitive to the antibiotic ampicillin. To do the mapping, you will need a bacterial recipient that is HFR negative and that lacks the genes for leucine and threonine. The recipient will also need to be ampicillin resistant. As the recipient bacteria needs leucine and threonine in the media to grow, then on media lacking those two amino acids, we will not get any growth. But the donor bacteria will be able to grow on the media as it can make the missing amino acids. However, if we add ampicillin to the media lacking the amino acids, the donor bacteria will not be able to grow as it will be killed by the antibiotic. Now, if we mix the two bacteria together and allow them to conjugate and then plate them out on the media lacking the two amino acids and containing ampicillin, then the donor strain will die due to the ampicillin and the recipient strain will also die unless it has acquired the genes for making leucine and threonine from the donor. And this is where interrupted mating comes in. At fixed time points, you take a sample of the conjugating bacteria and disrupt the mating process. And this effectively stops the transfer of DNA from the donor to the recipient. If you then plate out the bacteria mixture on two different types of minimal media, one containing leucine and the other containing threonine, and both media types containing the antibiotic that will kill the antibiotic sensitive donor cells, then you can effectively map when the leucine and threonine genes were passed over to the recipient. Now, as I said, the donor will not grow on the plates because of the antibiotic. Hence, anything that grows will be the antibiotic resistant recipient. However, the recipient won't grow unless it has acquired the genes from the donor for the missing genes for leucine and threonine. Hence, at time zero, the plates will show no colonies as the recipient has not had a chance to acquire the genes it needs from the HFR donor. Now, the single-stranded DNA is threaded over from the donor to the recipient at a set rate, and so the genes will be passed over to the recipient in a consistent way. Hence, at the next time point, some of the DNA will have crossed over from the donor, and if it contains either of the genes missing from the recipient, then the recipient will be able to grow on the media that is missing, in this case, leucine or threonine. As you can see in the figure, at time zero, no colonies. At time point one, still no colonies. At time point three, we suddenly have colonies on the threonine plate and the plate that contains added threonine. This tells us that the recipient has now acquired the gene to make leucine, as it can grow in the absence of leucine. Remember, the plate only has threonine added. 
This means that the Lu gene must come before the Threa gene because the bacteria are now able to grow in the absence of leucine. This is confirmed at the next time point when the bacteria starts growing on the plate with leucine, as it can now make threonine. By plotting the number of colonies that grow and then extrapolating back to the time axis, it is possible to assign a time in minutes as to the relative position of the genes on the bacterial chromosome. So by using antibiotics, an HFR strain of bacteria, an antibiotic resistance gene and selective media, it is possible to map the order of genes on a bacterial chromosome. What I've just described is a somewhat simplified version of the experiment and they can be made incredibly complex and used to map a number of genes at once. And using this approach, it is possible to map an entire genome of a bacteria and sign relative positions for the genes based on the time it takes for the gene to be transferred. For example, the E. coli K12 genetic map can be divided into 100 minutes, which is the time required for the full chromosome to transfer at 37 degrees. Hence, we have a map of relative locations of genes to each other. However, there are some issues with this approach to mapping. The F factors are limited to E. coli and closely related bacteria. Mapping of the whole chromosome is rare, and it only really works best for genes that are close to each other on the genome. The F plasmids are also large and of low copy number, and conjugative plasmids are often too large to use for genetic manipulation and cloning. The interrupted mating approach to gene mapping is an historical approach, and now we would just sequence the genome. However, it is handy to look at it and think about it, as it does throw some light on genetic exchange between bacteria. 